Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy, and you're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. On the phone, we have a guest today, Lindsay Riley, founder and designer at Lindsay Tia. Welcome to the show, Lindsay. Hi. Thank you for having me. So a little background on Lindsay. She owns Lindsay Tia, which is a lifestyle brand that symbolizes a fashionable way to make change. She makes handbags, purses, jewelry, etc. But what's interesting is that each bag created is full of personality and inspired by her favorite people, places, and memories. Lindsay Tia designs her bags to inspire, encourage, bravery, and empower others. Let LT be your fashionable way to show the world just how powerful you are. So, first of all, Lindsay, I know you've built this amazing empire on purses, handbags, totes, etc. And you're extremely young. Tell us how you got started, how old you are, and what you what got you into this business? Yeah, so I'm 25 now. I started selling when I was six years old. And at 14, I started um, selling and making handbags uh, at my friend's mom's hair salon. And it kind of just took off after that from selling them in college and going out and getting new stores to sell my bags. At 21, I opened my first store in Abington. Mm -hmm. And right after that, I just kept hustling and getting into stores. And last year, I was up to 38 boutiques selling our line which is all manufactured and sourced in America, which it leaves us for a niche market, which is awesome. So what's interesting about your products too is, first of all, I own a whole bunch of Lindsay Tia bags. And <laughs> like the whole reason you got into it is you said that in the fashion world, like typically you go out and buy a purse and there's really nothing special behind it. Can you explain a right. little bit about that? Yeah, so I was in Paris actually buying a bag for me and my mom to bring home and share that memory of having a bag together. When I came home and I thought I had bought it at a mom and pop shop, sure enough, it was in Marshalls all the way down to the lining and the zipper. And I wanted people to be able to carry products that carry that special memory with them wherever they went because as much as you have all these products, they also carry around all the memories that you wore with them. So I wanted to recreate that, making Lindsay Tia products limited edition so that all your memories were limited edition. And I know you do a lot of speaking for large organizations. I've seen you speak at the Mass Women's Conference. I know that you're now speaking at an event for Girl Scouts just to empower and inspire women. Um, last year at Mass Women's Conference, you kind of launched your bravery campaign. Talk about what the bravery campaign is, your bravery bag line, etc. Yeah, so last year I got the opportunity to partner with um, the USO, and I wanted people to give back as well as be aware of what these organizations were. And everyone who carried the bravery bag, $10 went to support an organization, as well as it was a way to bring people together and show the bravery within all of us. So for every bag soul, not only did we give back, but we also took down all the brave stories of all the people that we met and carried our product. And sure enough, when people were going out, they would see another bravery bag or bravery product and go up and say, you know, what's your brave story? How can I help you? So unlike other brands that separate women from your Vera Bradley to your Louis Vuitton, we've created a brand that actually brings women together on the same fact of fashion. That's awesome. And mm. talk about some of the new lines that you're launching, because I know you're doing some stuff for men, some jewelry, et cetera. Tell us what you're working on right now. Yeah, so we grew the handbag line, and we realized that we had a lot more customers that believed in our mission and giving back to the military, as well as the American dream. So we created a necklace line that has I Am Brave tags and our anchor logo as well as our men's American flag belt line. We have um, a leather belt line coming out, uh, leather tote bags coming out, all to represent the bravery line, as well as American made. And it gives people affordable fashion, limited edition, and it's, there's something for everyone, all ages, all styles. So as an entrepreneur, a young entrepreneur, 
Like, what is your thought process going into a business? And I know a lot of your sales are online. You do sales all over the world. What was your thought process getting into a business that seems like there's just massive competition? Like you talked about the Louis Vuittons, the Vera Bradleys. Like, what is the thought process of going in? I think there's so many entrepreneurs that want to get into a business. And the first thing that stops them is the amount of competition. And here you had massive competition and said, I think I can go up against them. What's your thought process on that? Yeah, so I think there is a lot of competition, but I think there's enough room for everyone. I think that what I bring to the table is I bring back tradition to fashion so that, you know, everyone can make a product and all these companies, the Vera Bradley's, Louis Vuitton's, they now make absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. No one, anyone can have anything. So what I wanted to do was go back to the grassroots and just make what I'm good at and give it purpose and give it meaning and give it the romance that we lost in fashion. When we used to watch the black and white movies and going to buy a purse with your grandma and your mother was the best experience that you looked forward to for two years. And you had that memory forever and ever. So when you buy a clutch from us, for example, you get it in the box with a little black book so that every time you carry that bag around, you get to write all those amazing memories like my grandmother had when she wore her rings and she passed them down to me. She had all these incredible stories. And no company can, they can make all these products and make a million things, but they cannot give you those unique moments that you can. Hmm. That's a great idea, packaging it with uh, something to write all those memories down in. Yeah, it gives people that one-of-a-kind quality. Um, it lets people feel like they're the designer, they're unique, they get to tell their story. It is cool. Like it every is. piece has a story. Yeah. So, and it's kind of like you're involving the purchaser of the bag in, in making the bag because the story goes as part of it. So as an entrepreneur, just building your business, first of all, are there any of the bravery stories? Cause I know that people come to you now all the time with these unbelievable stories of bravery in their own lives is there any one story that just sticks out to you? Yeah, I mean, I get all sorts of stories from domestic violence to um, drug abuse to just overcoming college. Mm -hmm. And what I always encourage is that these stories are anonymous, but it lets other people know that they're not alone for mm -hmm. whatever they're going through, big or small. I think one of the best stories that I heard was right after our first big Bravery Bash event. The woman felt like she wasn't appreciated for, and she had gone through domestic violence in her first marriage. And she said, after hearing you speak, it was the first time I felt appreciated and that people cared about being a military wife. Mm -hmm. And that I can now take the empowerment that you gave us and the inspiration you gave us to go out there and make a difference to all the other women out there that's gone through domestic violence or hasn't felt appreciated before. Mm -hmm. And then I had a college student tell me that, you know, her parents, wanted her to go to the college of their choice, but she was brave enough to stand up and go to the college of her choice, and she's paying for every penny of it, and she couldn't be happier. And those are the stories that we need to hear, not all the bad stuff in the news. We need to hear about overcoming these everyday obstacles and battles that we're fighting and how we can help each other get through them, whether it's just a hug or a listening ear. Hmm. I love that attitude. And when we got started today, uh, Lindsay, you mentioned that you started when you were six. What were you selling when you were six? I started sewing when I was six. So I started selling handbags at 14. Oh, wow. Yeah, so she got into the business because of a love for sewing. Wow. So it's just a pretty unique story. So as an entrepreneur, there's got to be days that are just super challenging. And I know we had talked, I don't know, a few months ago, and there was a challenge in your business where – People actually take your designs because you actually sit and design each handbag and somebody had taken a design of hers and reproduced it. And mm. so somebody out there is buying a bag, probably thinking it's a Lindsay T and it's not a Lindsay T. Like, how do you get past obstacles like that or frustrations in your day-to-day -day business? Yeah, so every day is crazy and it's not work or anything. It's a lifestyle that entrepreneurs I feel like live so every day when I'm working so hard and giving back and trying so hard to be the American Mean Manufacturing 
to see someone take your design is pretty hard, Mm -hmm. but it's also the biggest form of a compliment because you're doing something right. Hmm. Um, So unfortunately these days, you know, there's no protection on handbags unless it's your logo and design. Um, So you have to, you know, put it out there and say, you know, this is our brand new, either buy the American made original or you buy the other one. And you know what, they're doing it for a reason because you're doing it something right. Hmm. That's a great attitude to have about it. Mm. And why is American made so important to you? Because I would imagine that because it's American made, having we've interviewed other people that are American made products. We did um, just last weekend, we interviewed uh, the founders of Bottle Breacher, who are an American made product founded on Shark Tank. And that makes your product more expensive. So right off the bat, if you wanted to cut your costs probably by half or more, you could go overseas for manufacturing. But you say, no, I'm going to stick with uh, American made. Why is it so important to you? It's so important to me, especially since we give back to the military Mm -hmm. with that bravery brand. I mean, I look at it as I want to be able to live this life and follow my dream if it wasn't for those who did not fight for our freedom. And that's my way of paying it forward for all the people that helped me out. And I think it's so important that we start bringing it here and making it unique. And it allows me to do limited edition lines and meet every person that sews a handbag and meet the family-run businesses that give me the materials. And it just makes a unique story. It's a connection. It's a family. So when you buy that product, yeah, it's a little more expensive and it costs me a little bit more money. But at the end of the day, I'm supporting family-run businesses. I'm supporting military families. I'm supporting the American dream. So to me, you're not buying a product. You're buying a life, a lifestyle. You're buying a dream. Um, and I think that's far bigger than any product you could really buy. And it gives a per- person a purpose now. Hmm, that's awesome. So I know you have a store in South Boston. And where can people buy your product if they want to go online? They can go to www.lindsay.com. They can follow us on social media at Lindsay Tia on everything. Okay. And your store is in South Boston on West First Street. That's amazing. So what's really interesting, we have just probably four more minutes. Um, what's really interesting about your story is that you've been an entrepreneur since you were a kid. Like, have there yeah. ever been days where you say, you know what, a desk job sounds really good right now? Absolutely. I think I look at all the possibilities every day since I've never really worked for someone ever. Mm-hmm. I decided why well, start now when I graduated. Mm-hmm. And some days the grass is always greener on the other side, but there's no job as rewarding as doing it on your own. And as far as your products go, so every piece you do, every clutch or tote or handbag, you do extremely limited production. So you don't want to have mass production of your pieces. How do you, number one, decide like what the trend is? So, for example, let's say you're working on your fall products right now. How do you know what is going to be the trend for the fall market? And how do you decide how many pieces you're going to release? So, we actually go, or I actually go over to New York and my one of my sources in Florida, and I see all the selection of leathers and materials that I could choose from. From that, I don't choose off what trending out there. I like to be unique and different and give people a different approach to the season. Hmm. What we do is we have four seasons a year. Um, each kids are broken up into three months. So we'll come out with, you know, 12 different clutch colors and we'll break it down to one to 12 times as each of those produced based off the amount of leather we can get. So when I tell people, you know, there's only one left, I really mean there's only one left because I can never get that leather again. Hmm. Um, especially from the sources that I get it. They buy it in very short runs, but it's quality and it's different pieces. Um, For example, like fall, we're going to do focus on textures and darker tones, but textures are number one, so you'll see a little fur this fall. You'll see wolves, um, and we're coming out with a few new style clutches and totes to give the people a little more of an option. Hmm. Amazing. 
I, I always need another Lindsay Tia bag. I only You're thinking about going there right now, aren't <laughs> I you? Know, I already have about 12. She's going to be able to build the rainbow with all the colors. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, so, last piece of advice. Do you have any advice that you, you could give to somebody? Let's say somebody's listening to your story and they're sitting behind yeah. a desk and they have a huge dream that they want to go after and you want to help them be brave. What is your advice to them? I would say definitely go for it. You never know unless you try. And at the end of the day, I looked at it as, you know, I wasn't really sure what I was doing, but it was the best way for me to build my resume at my age and exactly what I wanted to do. I think everyone, if they have the passion, no matter what obstacle comes their way, they're going to overcome it because you have to. That's all you're going to do. And if you have the right execution, you have the network, and you believe in it and you love it and you live it, you're going to make it work and it's going to work because it's based off a of lock and it's based off a of hard work. So you got to have them both. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of going it's, oh, all in. It's possible. Mm-hmm. You want everyone to know what if. I think that's the biggest thing. Hmm. Awesome. Well, you're super Thanks. inspiring. And anybody listening to today's program, you can go to Lindsay Tia. It's L I N D S A Y. Tia, T-I-A dot com, and you can check out her collections and um, buy some handbags or jewelry or belts or wallets, all kinds of stuff on there. So thank you for joining us today, Lindsay. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank you for having me.